Sophomores, welcome to our AP Class Preview Show. Now I know you just got done taking a really long test and the last thing you might want to think about is upper level classes. But here at Blue Springs High School we have some amazing classes that you definitely want to consider taking your junior and senior year. Let's go take a look. Now we're here with Ms. Schnackenberg in AP Chemistry. Ms. Schnackenberg, this is, a, this is an awesome class, isn't it? It is. It's a fun class. It's very hands-on. The students get to do a lot of labs um, to see the concepts we're doing in class, and then they can actually see them in the labs as we're doing those. So. All right, so do you mind if I sit in on the class a little bit and do the experiments? Nope, that'd be great. All right, and we need these, correct? Yes, you have to put your goggles on. You gotta have the safety goggles? Yep, for sure. I feel really cool. Yeah, they're awesome. All right, let's check it out. You're using droppers and we're counting drops, okay? It is important to mix the chemicals. So the way to do that when you have a test tube is you simply flick it, okay? We, we can't shake a test tube, right? It's open, so we flick it, all right? At 20 drops of the known solution of the iron three ion, iron three sulfate to one test tube, this will be your control for the iron three ion. What? But what do you, what do you actually have in here right now? So. Oh, soap. Right, I thought it was some cool, like, puffy chemical. We might get cross-contaminated, we might not get right results. You don't want cross-contamination. No. Itchy. Oh, she said, I heard her say not shake that. I'm telling you. This is water. Fair enough. So that's the ah uh, chemical? Yeah, the ah. Uh. Ah? Uh? Or is that, oh, that's double A. I know what this one is. This is iced tea. <laughs> I'm kidding. Did you think I was really going to drink it? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Can you only imagine my insides would burn to up? Drink the chemicals. Yeah, that's rule number so one. Everybody, make sure, make, sure when you're, make sure when you're doing this experiment that you don't drink the chemicals. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Schnackenberg, first question do we have to keep these on during the interview? Or can we, we do. take them off? If we're in okay. the room while we're doing the lab, if we're in the room the while you're doing the lab, okay, I will adhere to those rules. What, what's one of the things that makes this class so. So cool. Well, I think that the students really enjoy the labs. I mean, we do pretty much a lab with every unit, so they really get to see, again, those concepts that we're doing in class, and they get to um, get involved with the chemicals and, and learn about reactions and chemistry, and they can see it happening right there. Yeah, so it's real hands-on stuff. Students who even excel in physical science from the freshman center, um, even though you're thinking, oh man, I don't want to do science in college, well, if you take an AP class in high school, chances are you're done with your college credit requirements for your science. Absolutely, so and it's a lot less expensive. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so what is one of the coolest experiments, or your personal favorite experiment that you guys get to do? Oh my goodness. Um, well, in the AP class, we do several different exper experiments. I don't know if I would say that I have a favorite one. Um, you I don't, do. want, to, I you don't want to make the other experiments jealous. Flame they're, tests are they're fun. Burning stuff. Yeah, I ever wondered where cool. all the colors come from in fireworks? I have I have wondered that. Have you ever every, wondered that? Every chance I get. All these I wonder. cool metals. So they're gonna test a few of them today to try to identify their unknown metal. And it's all from um, and they all produce their own color, their own spectrum of color. So it's like a, it's like a mystery. It is. It's like an experiment mystery. It is. That's it's what awesome. they're doing. When you do stuff like this, do you feel like Albert Einstein? Kind of. Oh wait, he was math. Do you ever wonder what would happen if you just like mix them all together in one big pot? I'm trying to focus. Six, seven, <laughs> ten, twelve, fifteen, nineteen. You're Making very, me nervous. You're a very good dripper. Thank you. I don't know the scientific term. Wait, can I flick it? Yeah, flick away. Just don't drop it. That's how you do it right there. Wouldn't it be funny if all these were just water and she was just wasting your time? I'm here now with Katie. Katie, why do you enjoy this class? Because Ms. Schnockenberg is like really fun teacher and she really lets us do like lots of hands-on stuff in class. So you get to do a lot of experiments. What's some mm -hmm. of your favorite experiments that you've done so far this year? I like whenever we do stuff with the flames and you get to like look at the different colors. I like the flames. Yeah. You like the flames? Yeah. Do you like to burn stuff? Yeah, with the Bunsen burner. Oh, okay. I think we need a little more force with the uh, striker there. Oh, so the big football player doesn't know how to light a striker, huh? <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to stand behind you though. Terrible. Yes, let's add more gas. Right. More gas to the football player. There you go. Woo! Showed yep. you. Do you know how hot that flame is? 
super hot. Pink? Your hypothesis is pink? Yep. Okay, let's see. You didn't think I know the hypothesis about Nice, pretty orange. Hypothesis wrong. Right. Okay, wait, what's your what's your hypothesis on this one? Potassium? Potassium. What's your hypothesis? What flame? I just like saying hypothesis. Let's go with pink again. Pink. The hypothesis is pink. This is the kind of fun stuff you get to do in AP chemistry. The wood is on fire. Alright, I'm here now with Alex. Alex, why do you enjoy this class? Ms. Schnackenberg is a phenomenal teacher. She will explain everything to you. She'll give you all the attention you need to help you be successful in this class. You know she's not listening right now. <laughs> I'm working on that A. It's all that matters. You're hoping she sees <laughs> she this will later. See this. She she'll will. see this and she'll give you a good grade. She will. Okay, would you recommend this class to uh, a younger student, maybe a sophomore, who's thinking, well, maybe I could do that, you know, chemistry thing? Absolutely. Ms. Schnackenberg will help you as much as she possibly can. She will help you reach your full potential no matter what. I think you have a future in politics, my friend. All right, Mr. Stackenberg, you, you're gonna allow me to do this? Yeah, go ahead. This thing? Give it a try. I do this? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> uh, hold it to the side. Oh, you almost got it. Oh. Yeah, you wanna try? We got don't breathe. <laughs> okay. You can't I'm breathe kidding. when you do these experiments? <laughs> it's like Let's I'm see pretty. this sodium. There you so go. I do this and I just put it in here. Put it into the flame. And we're looking for that nice pretty orange color without burning the wooden splint. See? Good job, Mr. I'm Marble. Good. I awesome. took science in high school. Awesome. Bam. Next. You guys, is everybody paying attention? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's like a deeper yes. reddish orange. Yes. Yes. It's very fall. It is. So that's so that, that what was that? The calcium. Calcium is very fall. This is nice. Yeah. I'm a chemist. He is. He's ready to go. Yes. He can identify his cations. Cations. What when do we get the dog ions? Do you ever feel mixing all these chemicals like you're some sort of like wizard or something? No. No? Like you might mix something that might bring about a ghost or something like that? No. no. Wouldn't that be cool if you did? Are you supposed to put in 20 drops? You realize if you put in 21, you're gonna blow us all up? Could you create me a potion that would make me fly? All right, we finished up here with AP Chemistry. Now we're gonna take a look at a few more classes that you're definitely gonna to wanna to take. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mr. Marvel. Okay, now I'm here with our wonderful Calc AP teacher, Ms. Summers. Ms. Summers, Hi. how are you doing today? Doing great, doing great. It's Good. a great day to do calculus. Absolutely, it's always a great day to do calculus. Do you mind if we take a peek and sit in on one of your classes? I'd love it, let's go. All right, let's go. There's a whole lot of learning going on here. Look. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the mean value theorem, and the calculus people are really good about naming this according to what it does. Mean value, it doesn't mean it's angry, it means it's the average, okay? Now, the definition that they have in the book is if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there exists a number c in that interval such that the derivative is equal to the average rate of change. Does that make sense to everybody? I have a, I have a oh, awesome. Quick question, quick question. Oh, marble, yeah. Uh, what? Oh, what who? Okay, so what part did we leave you? Uh, do you have any idea what you're doing right now? You know how to do that? That's awesome. Number two, number two, did you get, is it four? No. What is it? Negative two cosine five. Oh, I was so close. So now that we've covered mean value, we're going to get on to our anti-differentiation. So looking at example 41 here, the integral of tangent squared y plus one dy. Who wants to do this problem? Marvel. I got this. I Come got on this. down. Show you, Bukovic. 
Okay, first off, we gotta get rid of some things. This looks like a musical symbol, so we're gonna take care of that. Um, <laughs> tan, it's getting to be winter time. Nobody needs a tan, so we're gonna take that away. Um, why would that even be in here? We're gonna take that away. <laughs> All right, so now we're left with two plus one, and then we've got DY. I assume you left out uh, the I, DIY, do it yourself. That's what I'm doing. Two plus one equals three. For now, would somebody like to show him what the real process would be? All right, let's see, let's see the real way, way to do it. Thank you, excellent. Right. Excellent, hey, that's what, that's what this class is about, okay? Students teaching teachers, all right? Sometimes it has to happen that way and that's okay, students teaching teachers. Now I'm going to write you up here in subordination. So Ms. Summers, tell me a little bit about what makes this class awesome. Well, it's upper level math, so that makes it fun right there. And then calculus, how much fun could calculus be? But AP calculus is actually good because you get to take a semester course that would be offered in college, and it's stretched out over the year. Now, a lot of times people in math classes, you know, there's that question of, how is this going to help me in the real world? Can you, can you answer that? How is Cal KP going to help people? If you're planning on taking um, on a profession that involves any kind of science, any kind of mathematics, whether it be being a doctor or being some kind of an RN or an engineer, actuary, you're going to need to have calculus in your college. So it would be nice to get it out of the way here. And for AP students, if you score a 3, 4, or 5 on the AP test, I believe this year it's about $89 you can actually receive 10 credit hours, in some instances 15 credit hours for that $89 investment. So it That's can awesome. save, money, save money, save time, like you get a good money. foundation. That's awesome. And we get, as you can see, we've made a complete circle here. So everything is circled back around. And if you take this class, you can find the, the radius of the hypotenuse tangent derivatives of that circle, right? You cover that. Or you can find out real stuff. That's not made up. <laughs> Wes and I have one question. What? Can you help me with my taxes? No. No? You don't learn that in here? No. Okay. Is this a new iPhone? Do you ever think it's weird that sign is spelled exactly like sin? All right, Sydney, tell me a little bit about why you enjoy this class. Um, well, I've always liked math a lot and so um, and also I'm thinking about going into the medical field which requires um, the higher level math so um, I, I, I don't know this was just like a the next step naturally. So it's good taking the yeah. next step you want to you yeah. want to be good in math you got future plans and so this class is going to help prepare you. Yes. Excellent. What's your favorite part about this class? Um, well I like the challenge that it gives me and um, Miss Summers is really cool so. You don't have to say that because she's sitting right over there. She has but no she is, no. Me, she has she no is, bearing on your grade. No, it's fun. She's hilarious during class, like makes jokes all the time and so and you can get come and get help. Like sometimes I'm in here every day after school and so that's something really great. She's available before or after school and during wildcat hour, so. so she made she makes math fun, right? Yeah, I think math so. Math can be fun. Say yeah. it say it with me. Let's both say it. one, two, three. Mm, math, math can, can be, be fun. fun. <laughs> This stuff is crazy, and you can learn how to do it. I mean, look at that. All right, Hans, tell me what is your favorite part about this class? My favorite part has to be the letters, definitely. The letters, because who knew the letters could be in math problems? Right, I didn't for sure, not when I took this class, but you know. Now you do. Now I do. And can you get those letters in the right spot? I figured it out. You figured it out? Give me an example. Well, you got like this word called sign, and then eventually you can turn it into CSC, which... That doesn't, that, English, that doesn't even make sense in our language. Nope. But math can do it. Math can do it. That's amazing. That's amazing. So would you recommend current sophomores to be thinking about taking this class? Definitely. I mean, not just from the turning the letters into... Different letters? Different letters, right. but... I mean, frankly, Miss Summers, she's funny. 
She's funny. She's funny. And again, you're not saying that because she's giving you a death stare right now. <laughs> what do you think are some of the advantages of taking this class in terms of your future? Well, you don't have to take it in college. Like, I mean, you have to, this takes calculus, so AP Calc. You if wouldn't you, have to take that in college, so no. then you could spend more time doing things like learning how to play the guitar, which every guy tries to do in college, right? Right, yeah. Absolutely. Come with me in this math class. It's Calc AP. I hope that I pass. That's the title track of the album right there. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but Miss Summers had me as a student when I was in high school. And go ahead and tell them how good of a student I was. Um... Oh, what? Oh, Go yeah, ahead, you just can a tell. Minute. No, you can tell. Right You're mic'd there. up. You can oh. tell. All right, we've wrapped up for the day. We're going to head to another class, check out another awesome upper level class. Mr. Rudolph, tell us yeah. one of the things that makes this class so cool. Um, for me, it's it, what makes it cool is that um, these are a bunch of advanced music classes or a bunch of advanced music students who are on the track to maybe do some music major or at least kind of do some kind of music program in college. I, I told them on the first day, um, my, my freshman music class in college, I had 40 music majors by the end of the semester. Because of this class, there was 25. By the wow. end of the year, it was down to 15 music majors. So, so definitely it's just, a good thing to get out of yes. the way in high school. Yep, yep, yep absolutely. So what would you recommend for a sophomore who might be interested in music and is thinking about those upper level classes? What do they need to be doing now? Um, definitely as a, as a sophomore, maybe even freshman, sophomore, junior, get involved in some kind of music class. If they're in band or orchestra, great, they're, they're on the right track. If they're in choir, they're doing something. We've got a lot of kids that have come through this program too that are just, you know, quote unquote, garage band kids that just play guitar. Any kind of involvement with music is almost imperative to be able to be successful in here. Yeah, so those students interested in music and in music classes right now definitely should consider Absolutely. AP Music Theory. Yeah, and even if they're not um, going to be music majors, it, it just strengthens the work they do in the rehearsal room, whether it's that band or orchestra or, or choir. Five, seven, four, two, three, two, four, seven, one, six, seven, one, two, three, four, four, five, Six, seven, one, two, four, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey! Stop when I stop. Yeah. This means stop. I thought you were like waving to me, like, hey, good job. Yeah. Hey, you might want to write down, you stop when you did that. Wait, 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 um, uh, wait. Yes. I got a suggestion. Let's do this, but as a hip hop song, and we'll get Little Wayne. Two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven. Do you ever think it'd be a good idea to sing words instead of numbers? No. Why, why I think not? we're right here. Two. Are we right here? Uh, no, way down there. Uh, uh, there's a lot of dots on that page. Three, I don't see any numbers though. Let's go beginning line yeah, they're in your head. The numbers are in your head? Three, four, five, five, six, six, five. You can feel the depth of the words that they, they hit you. Right here. Did they hit you right there? Oh. 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 Upper level students. Okay. <laughs> Melina, what makes this class so cool? Uh, well, I really like music, so it's really fun. That, that helps in a class like this. It does like help. <laughs> um, it's cool to learn, like, how the music is made and, like, why it sounds the way it does, rather than just, like, enjoying it and listening to it. You really know what's going on. So what do you think is the best part of this class? Or when do you have the most fun in this class? When? Um, I don't know. I like it every day. Mr. Rudolph makes everything fun, really. Yeah, he's a pretty funny teacher. He's a good teacher. Yeah. I feel like you learn things, but also have a good time. Definitely, yeah. If you're involved in music or interested in it, then this is definitely the class for you. Excellent. What is that? The metronome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, scared me you at make first. It so you can... You broke it! Oh. Uh, is there? Six, seven, five, three, oh, nine, nine. You feel me? <laughs> All right, so Zach, what's your favorite part of this class? Um, just learning new things about music that I didn't know before. Yeah, you really enjoy music? Yeah, I've taken piano for six years, but I don't take anymore. So, and I've been in choir through middle school, and 
now, so. So you're taking a lot of piano? Here, I'm gonna play something for you, all right? All right. That's pretty I good. I just made that up. <clears throat> what would you recommend for a younger student who is interested in music a little bit, but maybe they're intimidated by the whole AP music theory? There is a non-AP music theory, if you wanna try that first, and then go to AP. You think it's something that this class is manageable for students? If you're interested in music and have a, a little bit of a background and stuff like that, you can handle this class? You can handle it. You just have to work hard and do all your homework and everything like a normal Like class. students should anyway, <laughs> right? Am I yeah. right, Zach? You know what I'm talking about. I'm not impressed. some church up in here. <clears throat> We're still on page one? Oh, it's going to be a long day. That was awesome. That was awesome. I totally I had your back on that one. I, I, I'm going to go great. home. You're, you've got Good. the rest of the hour. Everyone take five. Is that what you say? So if you're interested in music, this is definitely the AP class for you. If music isn't your thing, we got more classes in store. Let's go check them out. I'm now here with Mr. Burwell in AP Physics. Mr. Burwell, this is an exciting class, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we do a lot of great stuff, so have a lot of fun. All right, do you mind if we sit in a little bit and have fun with great. this experiment? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do some momentum, we're gonna do some collisions, should be fun. Well, let's, let's get the momentum going and let's go. Let's go. Solving for v, for v, we have square root of 2gh. So we just gotta know what is this h, this change in height. You can also come back here, the first ball should be snuggled right in that little hole thing right here. Although if it's not perfect, it'll probably be all right. Then we try to get that one nice in the middle. It should hit it and make it go straight over. Woo, that was sweet. This, this, whenever we let go, we have it going through here. So that's, that would be the time for v2. Yeah. There's a lot of m's and v's, how do you keep them all together? V1, and that's going to be what it's like after. That makes perfect sense. So what just happened there? Explain to me what just happened. The, the, I saw the balls knock into each other, but I don't know what physics-wise you guys saw. The medium-sized ball is .019 meters. I'm not really sure about the others. We may need to use a caliper and measure it. Anybody know how to use a caliper? Mr. Marble, can you use a caliper? I've been known to use a caliper from time to time. Okay, everybody buckle up. We're going to use this caliper thing. Just real quick, you don't ever want your fingers <laughs> in here like that. In yeah, exactly. I'm trying to teach you, you not to do that. And can you read that number? No, where am I looking? Okay. You guys got to keep up, all right? Isn't that too? Yeah. This, this thing is really like rusty. But no, five's back here. <laughs> okay, no, but Come on. Am I supposed to look Is this right your first there? time using a caliper? Yeah. Mine too. That one right there. It says made in West Germany. Does that help? Oh my gosh. Just pick a Two number, points. really. Just let's. I'm going to let you make the call because you're the one that has to get the grade. So that's like 0.5, right? Yeah, it is. Yep. It's 0.5. 0.5. We did it! Okay, but now you have to do this big one. Ah. Uh, Anytime you guys need help with your AP Physics, just let me know. All right, so Mr. Burwell, tell us why this class is so cool. Um, it's really great because it's, it's hard stuff, it's difficult, but you can do it. And once you've solved this stuff, once you've figured out these really difficult problems, it's a really great sense of satisfaction that you've done something really, really difficult and, and something you'd really be proud of and something that'll help you for college. It, it pushes you really a little bit outside of your comfort zone, um, but the future's going to be great because the class is now being cut in half. We now have half as much material and twice as much time, and so it's really going to be accessible to just about any, any caliber student. Okay? Excellent, good. And Mr. Burwell, he's a good teacher. He's a funny guy. We try to have fun. We try to have fun we in here, have... that's right. We, we ram stuff into each other, drop things ball. off buildings. What, what other kind of cool experiments do you guys do? Uh, we did an explosion yesterday, which isn't nearly as cool that's as you think cool. it is, but you have to take the class before you find out what that really means. Find uh, out. We launch stuff out of cars, at, uh, at projectiles. We launch water balloons. Um, so basically just throwing stuff, light lasers, we get out lasers, up. we're blowing stuff, we're burning stuff, we do, we do it all. That sounds awesome. And I'm not, I, I'm not exactly sure what the official measurements are, but uh, this one I think is smaller than the other one. 
right? Uh, we're fairly certain in that. That's the one. Did we get a reading? What was it? Oh, I knew it. If you need some help, I'm a caliper expert. Andrew, tell me why, why did you take this class? Um, well, I mean, it was a challenging class and I kind of wanted to challenge my senior year. Um, it's a class I'm going to have to take in college. And I know Burwell's a great teacher and he makes it interesting and he makes it fun. I mean, physics, it's just, you start to take it and you start to realize how much physics is in life and how much you can see, like, physics everywhere. So it's really cool. So this is like a, this is a deep course. It's not just about blowing stuff up and, and crashing things into each other. I mean, this we, is really deep because physics is life. We haven't gotten to the blowing stuff up part yet. Sorry, go ahead and continue your stuff. Don't worry about me. Yeah, we're done. Oh, you're done already? Yep. We got it? We did it. What were our results? The masses are uh, the same all around. Since it was at a 60 degree angle, the potential energy equal to the kinetic energy. The velocity of the second one would be zero. And we just add the masses in again here and here by uh, taking the diameter of the ball divided by the time. We found it for the big one as well. First, we calculated it in 0.11 or something. That was pretty close. Simple stuff. Do you think you would notice if I stole one of these things and took it home? That would look really cool on my nightstand. Do you ever want to like do an experiment where you like drop your calculator off of the roof? No. No, watch the other day. Oh wait, let me show you how to do it. Ladies, come on. Please. Please. You gotta you gotta be one with the ball. That was perfect, that wasn't it? Oh, my eyes were closed, I didn't see. There we go. There you go. That was decent. Let's not, okay. That's, yeah. That was good. That, that was, Look, it's still going, that's good. It's never going to stop. Still, oh I my, just, I really it's just, it ever stop. that could like rock you to sleep. Yeah, you could put it on your nightstand. Like, you were going to. Yes, I'm a physicist. All right, Shannon, what's the best thing about this class? Probably whenever you get, whenever you understand a concept, because it's hard at first, but whenever you get it, you feel really good about it. So, so it's something that students can do, like it might be challenging, but it's something that... Definitely, you can do, yeah, once you, I mean, you have to practice, but once you get it, it's like really and it fulfilling. Comes together and it's like... Yeah, Aww. yeah, exactly. All right. Now, we were doing an experiment later, I was in your group mm -hmm. for a little bit, and tell me, how did I do? You need to learn how to use the caliper. So you get lots of help. Yeah. Okay, it's something that's doable. Mm -hmm. You feel good about. Mm -hmm. And Once college you credit if you... And yeah. college credit, it seems like a win, 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 win. Yep. Is that what it is? Yeah. Four wins. Four wins. How often in class do you get four wins, right? Yep. Am I right? Yeah. I'm right. Are you trying to steal that? Take, no, take, take that out to my car. We've had a great time here in AP Physics. We're going to go check out some more classes. We're now here in Ms. Crump's classroom. This is AP Lang, correct? AP Lang. All right, it's a very exciting class. Do you mind if we sit in for a little bit? No, you're welcome to join us today. All right, let's go. Have fun. So well, what I'd like for you to do first is read these two definitions, romanticism is and realism is. So while you read the definition, would you highlight, underline, um, note the important words that help to define or qualify what romanticism is? Romanticism is an artistic and intellectual... Did you want it silent? Did you... <laughs> yes, quietly to yourself, Mr. Marble, please. We're just going to annotate here and synthesize the definition. We'll have a chance to talk here in a second. Okay. I'm going to synthesize to myself. Okay, so hopefully you've had time to read both of them. What are some qualifying Thick. words to describe romanticism? How is Huckleberry Finn uh, a romantic novel? And I don't mean romantic like Valentine's Day with your significant other. Oh, okay, so, darn. Well, this kid and a runaway slave go out and do adventures and everything is totally against what the social norms were mm -hmm. at the time. And just shows how great that life can be as opposed to what's normal. Okay, perfect. Uh, I was Thank just going to say that. That was good. <laughs> Mr. Marvel, Matthias, be a tech punch. He did, really? Yeah. Oh, right I may have to confiscate that note. Okay, yeah, Grace and then... But how do you find Huckleberry Finn as an engaging character? Oh, Mr. Marvel, 
It, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's his literal pragmatic approach to his surroundings and his inner struggle with his conscience that makes him one of the most important and recognizable figures in American literature. Let's give Mr. Marvel some steps. <laughs> <laughs> Cliffnotes.com. That was, that was really insightful. Okay, well, let's talk about realism next. As they are, because they're really kind of idealized. Okay, very nice. I'm glad you brought up satire. And, um, okay, I like your discussion. So everybody understands romanticism, realism, how Huckleberry Finn qualifies under both themes, both genres. And what we're going to do is turn our attention to some art. What we're going to do today is analyze two paintings. One of them is an example of romanticism, and one of them is an example of realism. Don't this was an English Perfect. class. Oh. Okay, so, we're I don't really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me hear it. Civil War painting called order number 11. Does anyone And so this guy right here, what I'm thinking is he's got his hand out and he's like, uh-uh, you didn't just shoot my friend right there. Am I right? Am I right? Okay, so Miss Crump, this seems like a pretty intense class, pretty deep. Like, you guys get deep with some of the things that you do, huh? Yeah, we do. We like to analyze for deep textual conclusions about literature and art and any kind of text we encounter. What do you think is your favorite aspect of this class? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> I love it all. I love the energy the students have, the knowledge they come with, and the discussions that we have, like you just saw. So every day is pretty, there's a lot of chemistry in here in AP Lang. Absolutely. Well, now, what advice would you have for someone who's maybe a sophomore who's sitting there and thinking, I don't know if I can do an AP class like this. What, what advice would you have for them? Okay, that person needs to be a pretty engaged and independent learner. So a lot of what we do is outside of class reading, taking notes, thinking about the text so that when we come together as a class, we can analyze and learn from each other and our ideas. So you can't really be a slacker and be an AP Lang. There you go. So you got you to gotta be in on it. You got you to gotta want to work. But it's also rewarding, too, would you say, for the, ex for the experience the students have, Absolutely. but then also just the benefits, mm -hmm. you know, as they go on further in college. Absolutely. It's a college-level writing class, so it's composition and rhetoric, and so we analyze all kinds of different aspects of culture and society. That's awesome. And I know Miss Crump is an amazing teacher. She's, <laughs> she won't say this, but she's received many awards and accolations, and I don't even know if that's a word, but I just made it up. And <laughs> she, she's awesome, so you will enjoy this class for sure. Who do you think is cooler, Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer? I'm on chapter like three. So. Slacker? <laughs> I'm. <laughs> She's right there. Do you ever like dress up like Huckleberry Finn just to like kind of get in the character more? When? No. No. Yeah. yeah, me neither. Now, Deja, what's your favorite thing about this class? Um, my favorite thing about class is the interaction and the being able to communicate in the group. Um, I really like how we're able to analyze and really get our ideas across. Um, it's a really um, interesting and interactive class. What's been your favorite like book that you've read so far, a novel or, or piece of um, literature? Definitely Huckleberry Finn. It's, some people think it's kind of boring, it's very long, but it's very funny, um, a lot of satire, but it's also very realistic and a lot to go into depth with. So, would you recommend this class to someone, a younger student who's thinking, well, I, you know, I kind of like reading, I kind of like that sort of stuff, but would you recommend this class to them? Um, for sure, not only for the um, not only for the college credit, but also for the experience and being able to be in a class with advanced kids is also is good for intellectual, but also for um, for, human, for communication reasons and being able to just talk and have fun. Yeah, because it seems like you guys have a lot of fun in here. You are joking around some, you're analyzing things, you know, there's some humor, there's some serious moments, and but things can get pretty deep too, huh? Uh-huh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So what would you, how would you describe Miss Crump as a teacher? Um, Miss Crump is super, super funny. Um, she's really, really uplifting, very outgoing, and she really knows how to get the class started, but also keep it on focus. Yeah, so definitely, would you say one of your favorite teachers? Well, definitely one of my favorite teachers, One of yes. your favorite teachers in the upper level class. Mm -hmm. You out there watching, you gotta take this class. Alright, cool. Why do you enjoy this class so much? Um, like every day I come here, it's kind of just like we're a family and we discuss whatever we feel like. Hey, you gotta have a lot of discussions, that sort of stuff. It probably doesn't hurt that the majority of people in here are females, huh? Yeah. All right, we're getting to the real reason why you like this class, right? You ever like pretend okay, to read, but you're really thinking about Call of Duty? So AP Language and Literature, definitely a class you want to look into. 
It's got awesome discussion, an awesome teacher. You guys feel like a family in this classroom. Definitely, it could be right for you. Now that's just a glimpse of some of the upper level classes you should consider taking. Here's a full list of everything offered here at Blue Springs High School. As you can see, there's definitely something for everyone. So we encourage you to start thinking about what upper level classes you'd like to take and talk with your counselor about what you need to be doing right now to make sure that happens. These classes are fun, challenging, and a great way to get a jump start on your future. Come with me in this math class. It's Cal KP. I hope that I pass. That's the title track of the album right there. I hope that I pass. I think that's what angels sound like. I hope that I pass. Man, that. Shh. Just let the moment marinate for a second. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. <laughs> I hope that I pass. Man. Remix. <laughs> I hope that I pass. <laughs> That's fire, boy. I hope that I pass because fx equals x3, 3 over x. Do you understand any of that? No. Okay. Maybe we bring Miley Cyrus in for the next take. I hope that I pass. Booyah! That's quite enough, I think. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Sorry. Bring it back. Am I the only one who cares about that story? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, sad day. Thank you. Snaps back at you. It'll be fine. Ugh. <laughs> We're not getting that back. Whose is it? No, I'm not wearing this. Ah! That was intense. <coughs> Took the wind out of me. Sweating. <laughs> you read me! Hey, 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 well. Good, huh? You gotta sing with Miley Cyrus, though. You gotta sing. I came in like a wrecking ball. Oh, I don't sing. Yes, no, Mr. Marvel. I mean, it's kind of required. You broke the experiment. How are we going to be able to find the, step, the thing that he was drawing on the board? Two, one. That was beautiful. Good job. You guys are my homies. Yeah.